for the Global Alliance for Climate Smart Agriculture. I'm Simon Lever. I coordinate the work of a wonderful team in the facilitation unit that is hosted by the United Nations um, Food and Agriculture Organization, FAO. And um, today we are bringing the discussions and paving the way with ideas of what our investment action group will be working in the next couple of years. Um, for that, I have got um, the help of the, one of the core leaders of this action group, which is Tony from the World Business, um, it's always a difficult to, to say, but the World Sust Business Council for Sustainable Development. It's like AXA, it's a bit of, quite of a mouth, mouthful. But um, the, Tony will be, will be joining us, um, also bringing us some, some of you know, his expectations, ideas, what he, what he can, can see for this year that is already starting well, for, at least from Tony and I, started really well. So Tony, without further ado, may I leave it to you. And um, after, after you, your intervention, I will bring on the discussions again of what GAXA is and, and we'll, we'll have a live discussion, okay? This is, not a, this is not a presentation type. So over to you guys. Yeah, thank you, Simon. And, and thanks everyone for joining the call. Um, so as Simon mentioned, my name's uh, Tony Shanton. So I'm the, I'm the Director for Scaling Positive Agriculture. Um, I work at the World Business Council for Sustainable Development. Um, I'm actually also um, based in, in Norway on uh, our family's, uh, family's farm, which has been in the family for about 250 years. So I'm lucky enough to be exposed to agriculture in my day-to-day -day job. And even when I, when I look out the window outside, although in Norway, there's a lot of snow on the ground at the moment, so not too much to do in the fields. Um, so the World Business Council for Sustainable Development is a, is a non-profit organisation um, helping the private sector meet the sustainable development goals. Um, and we've been a committed member of um, the Global Alliance for Climate Smart Agriculture, GAXA, since 2015. Um, we believe that, you know, the, the, the mission of climate smart agriculture is of, of vital importance, especially this year, of course, being um, a year when we will um, see a food system summit. Um, the first time heads of state will come together on the issue of food. Um, and agriculture, but also um, COP26 being a very important milestone, um, being this period of, of ratcheting up and expecting more from countries on their climate commitments. Um, we're seeing more and more focus on agriculture um, and on the role of agriculture in um, some of these commitments around, of course, adaptation and mitigation and how we make sure we maintain productivity around that. Um, but one of the key areas um, of how to um, address climate smart agriculture is the, the role of investment and finance and what we can do um, in, for this. It, it's critical to getting scale, um, importantly. There's a lot of ideas on innovation and technology that we see coming to the table. Um, but ultimately, the investment action group is trying to say, what can we do to help GACs and members identify some of the issues that they're having and trying to get to scale when it comes to better investments, better financial decision making and so on. Um, but it's also one, of course, of, of opportunity. Um, you know, we, we saw from the, um, uh, the Global um, Adaptation Summit, which was back in January just last month, um, the huge potential for things like um, digital climate advisory services, which is a really important development area for climate smart agriculture right now. These types of services which are being brought to farmers um, around the world, the majority of whom, of course, are all facing challenges when it comes to a changing climate, weather information services, soil information, for example, are growing incredibly quickly. Um, in India, for example, there's already a market around 400 has the potential worth of around um, $430 billion in the Indian market for around 90 million agricultural households. Um, across Africa, um, we're seeing the growth in these types of services. 90% um, of the market remains untapped. You know, we're seeing hundreds of different solutions being brought. Many you know, registered farmers and growth of registered farmers who are using these types of solutions. But ultimately, we still have a lot of challenges to tackle in the way in which we're going to scale this up so it's done in, a, in an equitable way so that all farmers can have access to climate smart agricultural solutions. 
Um, and we know that we need to see things like public-private partnerships happening. What does good pu public-private partnership look like in um, areas, growing regions where we know that government um, intervention is vitally important, but also the private sector can offer a lot? Um, what are the right financing arrangements that we can set up for these things? We're, we're hearing all about blended finance instruments. What's the role of uh, the, the public sector coming in and offering first loss financing to some of these projects, but then the private sector therefore coming in and feeling more confident that they can invest into some of these services. We're also questioning, of course, what the capacity needs to be amongst implementation parties, farmers, governments, businesses, um, academics in order to actually get this right. So the role of this GAXA Investment Action Group is to start looking at what that agenda um, of um, of change should be in 2021 and obviously Simon and the team will take you through and how to identify that but like I said uh, this is a really exciting time for working on finance and investment into uh, CSA and so you know this is a great um, call to have today to really get robust feedback and, and keep us as a group of GAXA members moving in the right direction looking into the right kinds of issues that you believe we should be tackling so like Simon says, this is an opportunity and a forum for, to hear from you, to hear from our members, and then take that away and, and synthesize it into a bit more of a, a comprehensive um, set of, of work um, that we can do for you in the coming year or so. So thanks a lot for um, yeah, letting me briefly give that opening. And um, of course, really looking forward to hearing from all of you today, your views, questions, ideas uh, from around the world and exciting to see uh, where we take it. So back to you, Simon, and thanks again. Champion. Thanks, Tony. Um, thank you very much. I think um, we all heard um, Tony. Um, it's important that we um, bring our thoughts to the table. Um, without without um, further ado, I would like to not um, obviously don't get don't get bogged down in in a presentation. So for those for those who um, I mean, everyone. I think everyone is quite familiar with GAXA. Um, was was launched in 2014 by the UN um, Secretary General Summit in in New York. Um, started with 46 members. Um, from the idea was to to bring everyone in the table. So private sector, um, civil societies, NGOs, academia, and government. Stop the discussion sometimes that was going on one way on climate change and agriculture on the other way. Bring them all together and discuss at the global level. Um, today, 2021, we reach more than 500 and plus member institutions. So it's growing bigger and bigger. The idea um, and the structure behind this is made for everyone to participate. As you can see there, we have got um, the regional alliances. In this call, there is Lufingo too, our regional alliances leader, linking up what is happening at the global level to the regions and then from the regions feeding back um, to the nations. Um, then the idea of um, this um, group that we have is fitting into the action groups. The action groups are divided into um, the knowledge creation bit that we have, um, the, the, the one that we will be discussing today, the investment and the policy action groups. Um, the investment action groups is led by two big organizations, um, CSIRO from Australia and WBCSD um, that Tony is representing. And what Tony said is they, the, the main um, role of this action group is to improve the effectiveness of public and private investment around the three pillars of climate smart agriculture. So without, um, without going into too deep, um, ideally is that we, we create knowledge with these action groups, that we engage um, with, with our members and we create partnership that, that can bring more work to scale up initiatives around the world. And the, the concept of, of, of also sharing with the outreach this knowledge and this partnership to others. So um, as you were, I don't know if you're following this series of, of um, discussion that we have had in the past, Cornell University uh, did a great survey in last year 
to ask our GAXA members to identify where were the main um, policy barriers that they were, um, you know, finding for for people uh, to for the action groups, uh, particularly with the investment action group. And they identify that the, the main issues are, are, are three, we just probably summarize it in three, the access to rural financial services. Um, it's it's hard for, for, for people to access these services um, from, from, from rural areas. Then the, the lack of um, connection between the lending requirements and CSA practices. So there, there, there is a bit of, um, you know, was, we were last week, I don't know if you were there with the, with the Venezuelan um, agriculture society and they were saying how difficult it is for them now for, for banks to give them money to, to or lend them money to do anything. They are getting loans for a month or two months, which does not allow them to plan any further. And therefore, um, the, the third point, the lack of government, uh, central finance and, and policy support to improve these um, investments. So um, the recommendations that the GAXA members had in that survey was for this group in particular to work on increasing literacy of GAXA members so that they can access financings for CSA projects. Therefore, this group create some sort of platform or some sort of um, way that other GAXA members can, can get to know um, these initiatives. Um, try to also facilitate pri private and private partnerships to, um, to fund CSA, what is also called the matchmaking. So if we have got a member that is working in, in Africa and another member that is from the private sector, they, they, they need to, they have similar needs, put them in contact together, make them work together. And the idea is that uh, with this, we will increase obviously the, the coherence between the lending requirements and CSA practices that we were discussing for therefore try to work also with the other policy group to, to enhance the national funding initiative for climate smart agriculture. So this is a bit of a, the, the, the overarching um, knowledge that happened. And this is what I would like to bring now the discussion. And I'm just disconnecting my microphone. We'd love to ask the group um, these three questions. So what this, how does, um, you know, a successful investment action group look like? What can we be doing better? You know, how can we really make an impact in this group? You know, what can um, this action group can be prioritizing for the next following years? You know, actions, ideas in which we will capture, then we have got Nadine uh, Van, Van Dyke on, on the other side with the computer capturing all the discussions. So, We'd like to now bring these um, questions to you. Um, and, and what we did last time, I will remember, just write this question somewhere, you know, what is the vision? So what, how a successful um, in, uh, investment action group will look like? Uh, what are, can we really make an impact? Where can we focus for the next um, couple of years? And, and then we will we'll need, we please don't want a shopping list. Okay, so please bring ideas, ideas like I made, let's, let's, let's have um, discussion when lending institutions or let's bring more the private sector on, on, on to, to tell us how to, you know, knock down these this bottlenecks or ideas that, that we can also have a time frame and say, look, we will focus for this year here, next year we could do the other. So this is, this is the discussion that I would like to bring today. Okay, so I will stop sharing my screen and give you the microphone if you have got um, the Yana just paste the, the these three questions in the chat so everybody can look into it so I'm looking now at the you can raise your hand and bring bring some some discussions but I don't know Davide I, I don't know if, if I want to throw you there man but you come from the from the private sector um, from Urbinati. And, right. and, and it would be great, fantastic sometimes to hear from, from the private sector, um, you know, what, what are the bottlenecks? What, are, what can this group be doing to help, um, you know, also the private sector? 
Mm-hmm. So what are the things that you might need, you know, um, this group to help you, for example, to work with uh, governments? You know, there was a very interesting discussion that happened a couple of um, months ago um, for the food lost and waste. Um, sometimes they, they sat with the private sector in a round table and, and the, round, the, the private sector was so much interested on, on sometimes talking to government to get visas to fly into those countries. You know, not, nobody ever thought of, of, of little things like, like that, you know. Everybody thinks that private sector is about money and, and giving money and profit. No, they just wanted to sometimes get, get small help to, to be in having a meeting with, with someone at the, at the country level. So, David, what do you think about it? And, and if I can please ask you to bring your thoughts into actions, you mm-hmm. know, so let's be more, more, more private sector on this one. Okay, Over so, to you, David. So, good morning to everybody. Thank you to Simon to introduce me. Um, okay, so from the private sector, we, we are engaged from the beginning of the project and we have the connection between the final needs to the person that can provide the service, what they mean. Uh, for instance, I give you this example. In the past, uh, we were, thanks to the, to the World Bank, we give the opportunity to Belarus to start introducing new pines, new pines in field. So we receive the need from the country that need to take bigger the area of forestry. And we are at the beginning, we have the knowledge to start the process. So in my opinion, how the private how the private sector can help is um, to focus on, um, okay, it means that we have to make better the world in the agriculture, but this is, in my opinion, too far. We have to include some little step in between and the private st- sector with his knowledge can help organization and all the actors around to achieve these, these small steps be- before reaching the, the maximum, the maximum okay. result we have to get. Okay, mate. So if I put it in action, it would be, would be probably better that... Um, we organize some webinars so we can share resources with our GAXA members regarding how, you know, private sector, um, you know, plans or how go to, to go about, um, you know, distributing information to our members. How would you put that into an action, something that we can make it happen? Okay, usually the government uh, uh, release a plan in which they need to provide uh, some quantity of crops, okay, we call crops in general, okay, for, for the sustainability of the government, of the, popula- the city in itself. And what we can do is uh, if the government, who is into the government, has to as you said, arrange a webinar in which the person that can put action in order to to get real this this project in order to get in touch with each other. So if we know the government need uh, some pioneers, they need to have more vegetables. If they arrange- Let me, me, sorry if I interrupt you, Mike. So you think that this group should be asking private companies to pitch their services to governments that they are trying to implement climate smart agriculture practices. Exactly, because usually the private sector have the solution to achieve the goal released from the government. So if the government need to increase some production for X reasons, the private sector joining with the his chain or other player may make it real okay fantastic thank you so much davide um bas what do you think about this you you come from the salt doctors um you've got your experience in, in this field so is there any any anything that you would like to add over to you bas yeah uh, thanks uh, thanks for having me and uh, thanks for asking me this um 
Yeah, I guess we are in 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 the projects that we are involved in. Uh, very much one of one of the implementing uh, partners. Huh? We 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 go to the countries and uh, and uh, trouble we run into. I would more think uh, seed seed import or soil samples. You know. Uh, we found many times that if we have soils analyzed in a local lab and we also analyze it in our own lab, that we get different results. So we prefer to get it in uh, into our own hands. Uh, and that sometimes is, is difficult. At the moment, for example, we're trying to import seeds that we've known, we know to work better under saline conditions in Bangladesh and we're trying to get them to Egypt. And that's been going on for three months now. That is, uh, we thought we started well in time, so we can start the, the, the growing season in February, and, and it's, it, we're running late. Uh, so that would be kind of the, the, the practical things that I think uh, we, we run into uh, sometimes. If that is kind of what you're what you're asking for, I think the previous. I would like to bring it to bring that comment into an action. You know yeah. what this group can do to um, facilitate. You know. Um, yeah, that. yeah, and I think the previous suggestion, you know, to to have uh, governments, uh, you know, they, they have their questions and the private sector has their solutions. So to, to bring that together somehow, uh, I think is, is is a good idea. We're currently working on on a, on a, on a broader report of that uh, in in northern Africa. What are the needs, and uh, which partners, which parties can 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 supply the solutions for those needs? I think that could be uh, that. Could be done in a better, more structured way uh, for more regions in the world. Fantastic. Um, thank you so much. Uh, Hemsing, last time you, you had a very good um, discussion on, we had a very good discussion on the, at the policy level. You were saying that there, there was um, a miscommunication probably between what is happening at the global level and in your region. Um, how can you probably bring your perspective now? From the from the local perspective that you have got with the small islands, into the investment action group, how can we do something now um, that that can be fruitful and, and beneficial for the region? Over to you, Hemsing. You are muted. You are muted. So you need to unmute yourself. Hemsing, you are muted. Sorry, mate. You are muted. There you go. Good. Okay, thank you. Yes. What I wanted to say last time is that, uh, you know, everybody knows, everybody knows or is supposed to know what climate smart agriculture is, but nobody does it, put it, nobody puts it into practice. Here, we don't know what government is doing. Right? They are supposed to be an extension unit of agriculture. It is called FARE, F-A-R-E-I, in Mauritius I'm talking about. But when it goes downstream, when it goes to the, to the, to the small plot holder, the small planter, right? We do have a lot of small planters, particularly in small islands, right? We do also have big planters, the private sector. But we are talking about small planters. So, but the small planters are not informed about what, what um, climate action or climate smart agriculture is. It's only we are doing it, with the, the NGOs, right? And even there, our knowledge is limited, right? So th we are trying to do the best of what we have, what we know, what we can share. So it was, our intention that uh, we get more from GAXA itself, right? And asking their members, the official members from the government to integrate or work more closely with the, with the small groups, with the NGOs, right? Small planters. And this is one way of doing it. Second is um, have a sort of exchange program between you know what one organization is doing either in one part of the island or of the other part or what what small farmers are doing in one island and uh, could be done in other island right this would be a second way of getting people to understand 
let me tell you one thing that we just uh, we are just experiencing right you know we had this uh, uh, oil spill in in the ocean southeast coast of of mauritius and uh, all the fishermen were told to stop to give up fishing completely so no no activity no fishing activity nobody to eat fish from the from the ocean in that part of the island from that part of the island so our fishermen community from the southeast community from the southeast region of the island they all found themselves in a in a in a situation of unemployment right government came to rescue them but it's not enough anyway okay. it's something so thanks mate the, so look um i can probably get two points from you to work um this group work probably better or more with the ngos on and, and actually the link with important link with the ngos um and the exchange program that you 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 kept on on saying um having having a more probably um guest with speakers for for to 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 talk to and, and educate um with with what the latest technology is or other other things into the region is that correct yeah and just just to, just to complete one one minute right it's uh, so in order to help these fishermen right to to get an alternative or a, a second way of living is we encourage them to do small farming yeah. in their in their in their yard but they say that they are used only to fishing so we have got one island in 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 the region which is in fact a dependency of mauritius is called rodrigues island and there the fishermen they do their their fishing they do their small garden and they do their farming right so they said let us let us try to do like what is being done elsewhere so okay. we sent we sent four people to go and study how the fishermen are doing in that small island so they are doing their fishing their small plantation and their farming so okay. this is what we want to bring to mauritius and we want to share it elsewhere right okay thank you very much thanks mate thank you so much um can i um i i was thinking to probably ask steve uh from the uganda agribusiness alliance in um kampala steve are you around yes yes i'm here thank you no worries mate what's what's your opinion what's your perspective on this and and if there are any actions that we can take out of that over well I, i note that the uh, cornell study one of the things it uh, highlighted was the inadequacy of extension <clears throat> and certainly extension is an important element in um in in effective climate smart agriculture adoption <clears throat> what our general finding out of about 7 years of operating at uganda agribusiness alliance has been that that meaningful progress has al almost always been private sector driven but in a way which then invites public sector to be involved um so i think the same thing is going to be true of extension and in my in my opinion we need to look at more models that are working for private sector driven extension uh hopefully that has an opening and involves the public sector as well but doesn't wait around for the public sector to take the initiative uh, a project that we're working on right now is to do that looking at um uh, a limited number of exporters of fresh fruits and vegetables and um because they're trying to reach high value markets they're motivated to make their networks of outgrower smallholders uh be faithful to them uh be and and to make that relationship work and so what we want to do is to work with them to help them have, be able to reach the the export standards to reach these markets while at the same time improving the relationship um with the smallholders in their networks and providing um effective extension on uh community uh, i'm sorry um climate smart agriculture but also on on more inclusive revenue relationships so there's more revenue shared with the smallholder which will help the smallholders remain involved and also gender inclusiveness as well so this is going to be a, a pilot effort but again it's an example of perhaps a one example amongst what could be many 
of private sector driven improvement in an extension system that could effectively deliver climate smart agriculture and have it sustained past an initial uh, influx of funding sustained by the, the market revenues from effectively reaching high value mark export markets. So that's one idea. And so what I, what I would suggest from that is there must be a number of other good examples that could be shared of a private sector driven so approach. If, if I bring it to, a, to an activity, something that we can do, bring in case studies like yourselves to be mm -hmm. shown to CACSA yes. members and, and governments or yes. what, what would be your, your audience? What would be the targeted audience that you would like to, to, to pitch to, um, Steve? I see you, that you have frozen there. Okay. Okay, I think uh, we're gonna wait for Steve to, to, to come back. Um, in the meantime, we'll love to ask probably Tony, what's your opinion, mate? Like what, if you can help me to join some dots or if there anything that you would like to bring the discussion towards um, something, over to you. Well, I suppose from what I'm hearing, there's, there's clearly a need to think about this matchmaking services and, and how those can be more effectively provided. Um, so I, I think that idea has some, some real legs to it. And I think it's good that we're going to discuss and explore that as part of the um, GAXA um, annual conference, which is um, later this year. Um, I think also there's an interesting question about um, which value chains we may want to support, uh, sorry, and regions, of course, uh, we may want to support um, in order to be specific in terms of the, the value and impact that we have with our work. Um, but um, also, I suppose, be careful not to over, over commit into one particular regional value chain because we have such a global membership. So I think it's a fine line to, to walk there. Um, so yeah, I, those are my two initial observations on what I'm hearing from the group, um, as well as, of course, making sure that this is orientated towards you know, understanding the, the needs of the private sector and the, the financing arrangement. But, but I suppose I'd also say that, um, and I mean, you know, GAXA, we, we have to sort of remain pre-competitive in the sense of we can't commit, we can't back one particular solution over another. GAXA has to be putting forward to sort of a platform where people can learn and build the capacity um, as to what's needed. Um, so, you know, we'll, we'll have to go away and think through that, Simon, about how to get that, get that right yeah, balance. Great, but, great, great. Fantastic. Yeah, that is all about um, how, I think you're right, we, we, there's not a, a silver bullet for, for going about this. So um, we've got Lufingo um, Mamakamba. He is the Regional Alliance's um, leader. In, in GAXA, so the, the champion that is linking the dots between the global discussions and um, the regions and therefore the, the, the national level. Um, Lufingo, what's your opinion on this and how can this group, in your opinion, get, you know, make an impact? You know, what are the things that we should be focusing in, in, in your opinion? Over. Uh, th thanks, Simon, and good morning, colleagues. Um, I'm enjoying the discussion and I'm looking at from the scene, Tony, you set and the contributions uh, that, that came about. And for me, there are three main things that are coming out. Uh, you, we're talking about the issues on capacity, awareness, and um, almost like stock taking or tra uh, tracking mechanism. And the main thing behind these is really to how best can we stimulate private sector investments and ensure the value add. If there's no value add, private sector won't come. So the tail must ring for to attract private sector. And I'm, I'm riding on, on what you just said, Tony. Uh, so right now, I mean, if you look at it, the new currency is on food systems, right? And there's so many other things that are coming in, building onto this currency. How best can we manipulate or take advantage of that to attract private sector investments towards CSA and, and, and the like. So one key thing for me, Simon, is on looking at some stock taking or tracking mechanisms to, to see how these investments 
are being done. And I'm, um, I think the last time, Tony, you had shared something along these lines. I remember a webinar that I joined WFBSD is, is, is doing, and I think it's, 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 it's a very powerful tool that we could hold um, to show value add, not just to private sector, but also to public. The other thing is on capacity building. So Hemsing and Bas, you strongly mentioned about the whole uh, on issues to do with capacity, not necessarily strengthening, but capacity development um, uh, and strengthening. But I think it's something that it's, it's worth taking advantage of uh, and looking at how best can we bring in, I mean, there's so many, there are multiple uh, CAC uh, innovation and technology out there that we need to, to harness. So I think let's go back a couple of steps and see what are the key initiatives that we can do under capacity uh, strengthening or development. Lastly, uh, I think I, I already alluded to it, is on how can we raise uh, this new, uh, how can we raise awareness and build in towards this global currency? Um, if we really, really want to bring in other forms of investments, we need to show that value add. So can we come up with certain key activities that will raise, uh, lack of a better word, awareness that will attract these other uh, investments? And I think, I'm not so sure who mentioned this, uh, that uh, it sort of attracted me real good on examining um, blended financing mechanisms or models. Um, we can look at how best can we stimulate these different financing models um, and have other regions also learn and study and adopt such. Thank you very much. Thanks, mate. Um, thank you. Very, very important on um, the capacity development um, that Lefingu is, is mentioning. Um, also to, 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 to talk um, the private sector language. I mean, we can't be um, having a, a discourse that, that does not, you know, ring any bell for, for the private sector. So we, we have to get that. I, and also to show the added value, Lufingo, I think you, you are totally um, right on that. Um, uh, Thomas uh, and also Jacob Jose are representing uh, PDS Organic. <laughs> and, and, and we'd like to ask your, your also uh, perspective. Um, what do you think this group in, in could, could focus and you know, bottlenecks or anything that an action, a real action that we can go um, forwards. And then I've got power for all. If you want to, I just saw your comment. If you want to introduce yourself, uh, William, and, and and ask your question after uh, Thomas. Over to right. you, Thomas. Yeah. Uh, as far as, as I already said, we, we are just an NGO. And what, what really uh, struck me uh, is that we need uh, ground level uh, success models. You know, it should be a bottom-up approach, wherein we we should be able to create uh, success stories. I mean, without that, you know, is all remain in the government, public sector, uh, just because of the WTO and uh, this thing people talk about climate resilience. But we need to have a localized uh, uh, success model where uh, you know create it so that people get noticed it. And of course, it's very important to get, uh, because there is always a conflict between, in a small a small farmer sector, there is always a, a conflict between the productivity and livelihood and then the, you know, the climate resilience. So we need to really make that the climate resilience is what exactly is, uh, you know, needed for the sustainability of the farms and small farmers. So we need uh, models and sharing of experience and you need to bring in technology, especially the climate change, because uh, now earlier the climate change was very, very, you know, on a larger uh, platform, but now it has become very, very pocket, you know, pocket, pocket wise uh, climate, uh, you know, issues and changes that happen. We need uh, at the ground level, uh, uh, you know, the technology where we can really, uh, you know, capacitate the farmers on, the few, you know, the possible right. climate change right. and how to adopt it. I think it's uh, it's uh, we we are talking the same language. The capacity development yep. that what um, Lufingo was was mentioning. They are talking about the a uh, localized success model or success stories. Also, the failure. We need to mention the failure too. We are learning from from mistakes, and that's important. Um, so, if we, I think we're gonna we're gonna add that into um, our. 
um, sort of action plan or work plan to, to make sure that we are bringing those um, elements. Okay. Um, thank you so much, Thomas. Um, we'd love to give the, the word to um, Will. Will, you, 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 you have a comment there. We'd love to you know, introduce yourself and, 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 and tell us your opinion. And then we've got Bass next. Yeah. Yeah, thanks so much, Simon, and uh, thanks to everybody. I, I, I'm coming to this forum uh, with very little knowledge. Um, my uh, organization, Power for All, is, is over the past five years been focused mostly, mostly on decentralized renewable energy and solutions and how to s mainstream them into energy systems uh, at large. But over the last couple of years, we've been focused much more exclusively on sectors that benefit from these energy solutions and first and foremost that's food systems so over the past two years we've been focused more and more exclusively on trying to bridge the gap between energy and food systems across the value chain and so this year we're working closely with the food system summit uh, with the high level energy dialogue trying to come up with some sort of cohesive set of recommendations that governments and funders can refer to uh, that you know, helps to mainstream decentralized renewable energy solutions in irrigation, processing, cold storage, access to markets. And so I'm unfamiliar with, and we as an organization are still unfamiliar. I mean, we were working uh, with FAO and EFAD and others, AGRA, to try to build that bridge, but we're still very uh, uncertain about how the whole food system ecosystem is structured. And so the, the reason I wanted to join today was to you know, try and, you know, in, strengthen that link. Uh, but again, I don't know if this is the right forum for me, but I'm here. No, no, it is, yeah, it is, yeah. mate. I mean, um, we, this, in, this investment, um, this is the investment action group, um, but basically the working base behind uh, the Global Alliance in which uh, we're working to improve the effectiveness of public and private investments, you know, to support yeah. um, climate smart, agriculture initiatives like 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 you know the solar technology and and so forth yeah. so in that regard if you could um imagine this this working group um supporting more the work that you know um the innovation for example what would be an action that this group could um develop in in the future so I, so one of the most interesting things for me is to get the end user perspective around energy solutions, right? Uh, we, we tend to come from a supply side mindset uh, in the energy sector, which is my background. I've been working in energy for 15 years, more than 15 years. Um, and so, you know, the help that we need is to determine based on uh, farmer, smaller farmers or collectives, what are the key barriers that they're facing in order to you know, increase adoption? We know that affordability is an issue. Therefore, you know, uh, guarantees, risk mitigation from a finance perspective become really important. Mm -hmm. uh, but how do we mobilize that finance? Do we, ha we have to do it in partnership with the food systems um, sector. Uh, you know, these are the things that we're trying to, to get our head around and we can only do that if we have the input uh, from your side of the equation, right? And so it's all about, for me, it's all about affordability at the end of the day, as well as access to, you know, standardized, high quality uh, products, but the financing piece is the key for sure. And so this, that's why, you know, when I saw this investment group getting together, I thought, oh, okay, well, that, that seems like might be something that we could group. I just on. just keep on um just be in the loop um after after this um you know the next probably five ten minutes we'll be showing what are the um you know actions that we'll be delivering. Hope that um you know one of the action is to probably distribute information about financial resources or or you know available for for people to to actually have you know that's the idea of the group to make sure that private sector is talking to governments, that governments are talking to NGOs, that it's not just, you know what you're saying, that we sometimes we even even at the private sector level, you, you forget to to have the end user perspective, you know? So imagine how how if in if in the private sector that, that is already not happening. Imagine when you bring the global blokes talking and, and that's obviously going everywhere. So ideally is that we capture those those, those ideas here. Um, Brass, you you were saying um, you were you were you were raising your hands, Bus. 
Yeah, I was. I think <clears throat> related to the last uh, two comments, basically, I we we hey, in the in the in the in the in the in the last couple of years, I think we've had quite a few of successful uh, pilot projects. You know, you you have showcases uh, where you can somehow double the yield of a farmer, as we had in Kenya, or more modest numbers of still twenty or forty percent of yield increases. Um, but to me, it is. I would say almost frustrating, but let's call it sometimes disappointing that these projects then stop, you know. And I guess that also relates to the to the, it has to be it has to be financiable by the by the end users. Uh, they have to be able to afford those maybe more expensive seeds that the, we brought in to to also help increase or to had to supply the amount of compost that we we recommend is maybe too too much for them. So for me, it's sometimes actually. I think we have a lot of uh, of of, of uh, case studies where we can show, you know, these 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 interferences help, and they can on average improve yields by this much. Uh, but then it, then they stop, you know. The, the word project in itself for me carries something. It shouldn't be a project. It should be a, a long term implementation. Um, and I guess that is what what the last person, power for all, William said. Um, yeah, I mean, in the end, it all has to be affordable, you know, the, the, the solutions that we bring. Uh, so I think that yeah, for us that is sometimes where, it, or for me personally, more or less, that's where what is sometimes frustrating that it's, it's a project and it has an end, and then you've 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 reached something successful and then you have to say goodbye. That's just it's a pity. Well, this is the idea now that we ensure that um, we are building. You know, this what what Tony was saying the the matchmaking concept. So even though a project was finished. Um, Someone else is will reach you out, you know. Someone else you can pitch to someone else, and 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 also what Thomas was saying, um, telling your success stories to others, um, and that's all about uh, learning from 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 one region to another, you know, how Gaxas, the Global Alliance, can bring that to the table. Um, I think Arby, Simon, just yeah, building on that, what went what went not just success, but also failures, because I think we learn a lot from, in fact, mistakes uh, that have been made. And obviously we don't need to paint it in a fully negative light, but I think when we see why something didn't progress, why a particular project that was initially uh, subsidized or had a, a research grant or an innovation grant, and then like um, we've been hearing, didn't, didn't get to scale or didn't continue, we can really understand why that happened and, and beyond the matchmaking service, I think there's a lot of, like you say, knowledge that can be shared um, across the leadership on, on, on what happened, what the learning points were, where others can learn from those, those challenges in future. And then second, uh, across the policy group, which is that some of these things don't achieve or don't move beyond the initial grant because the regulatory environment just ultimately isn't um, friendly enough for the success um, of that work. So I do think that there's some work we can do to not just say it's about matchmaking A with B, um, but also actually saying, you know, what are some of those case studies? And let's properly analyze what some of the big challenges were. You know, we use technical capacity building or we use business processes very broadly, but let's get specific and actually get to those case studies and have people talk about them so others can learn. So I, I do think that would be an interesting thing to integrate um, and be specific, because I think it's those examples, even if it's on um, uh, the legume value chain or on, uh, on a particular area of horticulture, there's probably a lot of transferable knowledge that would move over to other regions or other value chains um, in, in the world. Yeah, fully agree. Um, that's the richness of, of GAXA, you know, the, the, different, the different experiences and, and and as you said, it's not about the, the just the good stories because we can learn so much. I mean, like in life, for mistakes or what did, when when something went wrong. So look, what I will do next because we're reaching out the time is to just um, ask uh, Nadine from our team to show the the slides that 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 um, she was trying to capture all these discussions and and see how it looks like for. Or you know what we can prioritize. Probably it's too much or no, but we, let's see what Nadine is is um, showing us. So uh, we have got. Um, if you can probably make it bigger, that would be great. Um, yes, thank you, Simon. I'm just looking into how to make it full screen. Mm -hmm. 
think that's this one. Yep. Okay, Thanks. if you can see that. Um, thank you everyone for your inputs. Uh, my name is Nadine, I work with the facilitation unit of GAXA. And I've been trying in the background to, um, to capture the points that you were making. Um, and so I'm happy to take you through it a bit because as Tony mentioned, we're trying to create an action plan for this uh, group and also the other action groups of GAXA to be presented during the annual forum. Um, and what I've done, uh, which I'm hoping is helpful, but we, we can reflect on it also later because it's not easy to capture uh, a rich discussion like this in, in a framework in a short meeting. Um, but what I've tried to do to help facilitate the discussion is um, I've put as objectives the, the main recommendations that came out of the Cornell survey that Simon mentioned. And then I've added in red some of the things that you brought up today. So um, Simon, do you want me to, to take the group through these or do you want to go ahead? I'm more than happy that the, you're doing such a good job and also good to, to, to give it to you unless you want me to, to run it, but it's up to you. Okay, let's let's do, I will briefly take you through them and then uh, maybe Simon, you can open the floor again for anyone to add any points or to make any corrections in case I misunderstood. Um, so we, what we have is uh, at the top, of course, the, the purpose of the action group that we discussed also at the beginning, uh, improving the effectiveness of public and private investments that support the three pillars of CSA. And uh, the first objective that we had put originally is to increase the literacy of members, of GAXA members, so they can access financing. And uh, we had identified as actions to organize webinars on topics that would help uh, members understand how they can access financing for CSA. And then the second one, which I think is one that we discussed a bit more today, is on matchmaking. And what I noted is that we seem to have identified that matchmaking is not only connecting GAXA members amongst themselves, although that's an important part, but it's also capacity building and it's also sharing best, best practices, right? And so in a sense, also identifying um, or sharing knowledge together and sharing very concrete practical experiences that might be helpful. And so I've added, you can see in red, the, to serve as a matchmaking institution, not only between uh, members who receive funding and members who are sources of funding, but also between governments and GAXA members who can help to realize policy goals, which would be an interesting way, I think, to work with the uh, Enabling Environment Action Group. And then also to identify capacity needs and best practices for financing arrangements for public-private partnerships, for extension services, uh, for models to reach smallholders and to capture end user perspectives and their barriers to adoption of CSA practices. And then I realize you can't see the, 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 the bottom of this, this page, but what I had put were other uh, concrete recommendations that were part of the Cornell survey. So to create a directory of members, for example, who would need funding and members that can provide funding. And then I've gone on to the next slide, which are the other two objectives that we had included originally for this group. So one is to increase the coherence between lending requirements and CSA practices, as Simon mentioned, um, which I, I think we didn't get into as much today, but because this was feedback from members that we received earlier, I have I've gone ahead and left it there for the moment. Um, so that would be to facilitate the communication between the funding institutions, um, and to understand what is needed for, for grants, to, to provide grants specifically for CSA. And then finally, we had included enhanced the, the national funding initiatives for CSA together with the Enabling Environment Action Group. So that is coordinating with the member countries, the regional alliances, with a focus on inv investing in CSA. And there I've added that it's important to work closely with NGOs also and, uh, and keep... Um, keep in mind what smallholders need. And this idea of having an exchange program for organizations to share farmers, farmers' experiences. 
Uh, and so this is the, the framework that we have now, which is not set in stone, but it's, uh, it's a work in process to develop our thinking. We will uh, move further ahead uh, later to add performance measures and also responsibilities who can do what, because as Simon was saying, we're not just uh, talking today. We want to move to action and understand what uh, uh, everyone can do and motivate, motivate you also to... Uh, to work towards our goals together. So thank you very much for that. And I, I turn it back to you, Simon. Thank you so much, uh, Nadine. Uh, what a good job um, to put all those things together. I can see then um, Thomas' point about the, the NGOs and Hemsing. Um, so well, well done. Um, yeah, guys, as, as you can see, we will be, this is one of the, the, the first discussions that we will be having. We need to obviously, be clear on, on what are the performance measures that we'll be adding to this, you know, um, X amount of, of, of case studies showcase to our members or, or webinars or, or any other events that could enhance capacity development. Um, and then the most important thing uh, I, I think uh, with, with Tony, we wanted to emphasize the this group, it's working on, on voluntary basis, it's, it's, it's us. Is our is 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 the people that that um, you know can allow one hour a week or some sort of you know during during the busy um, agenda allow sometimes to work on this. Uh, so if you or or any of your organisations would like to be um, you know taking a, an important role here to help you know to to to, to get one of these um, actions done with the help of the facilitation unit and other members, please. Um, raise your hand, get in touch with us, um, because this is a, a team effort um, that we can do together. And um, also what Tony was saying, that um, we have the our annual forum in April, so it would be good that we can bring some of these. Probably we have a lot of things in this, in this, in this table. Let's probably capture the best three and, and see what we can deliver with those three. But um, or any comments on these slides or, or anything, uh, particularly you, Tony, what do you think about it? Or any other members that would like to, to discuss? Yeah, I, well, I'll kick off. Um, no, I mean, this is, is great to see. I've just been um, sort of having a think about what's there. Um, and I think what would be good in here um, is just for us to, to be clear about, you know, how we're going to do that work. How will that be? Be actually achieved so if we look at literacy for me that's a piece about um about knowledge and capacity and so there's there's presumably going to be some level of of, an, of analysis that we, we would want to conduct so who would do that for us where do we find um the, the resources to make that happen second on matchmaking and um, for me the kind of how that can be be achieved i mean there are a lot of platforms already out there there's there's actually a really interesting um, initiative set up by the Global Agribusiness Alliance, um, which is the digital um, a digital financing platform for um, for small and medium enterprises on sustainable agriculture, um, and this is again giving SMEs the opportunity to basically pitch their their business idea and then reach out to other funding organisations. It's a whole online system. It's really interesting, and so. The point I'm making on part two on the matchmaking is that there are ways in which, you know, there's other platforms already out there. And so it could be a role of GAXA to help um, either facilitate, you know, a, a kind of a, a demonstration of those platforms to members. And um, that, that would be an interesting one. Um, coherence between lending requirements. So that feels, again, like a bit of a knowledge piece. And then, and then obviously, yeah, really important on that national and regional alliances. Um, as many of you will know, of course, GAXA has regional alliances across the world. Um, if you like, a, a regional um, climate smart agriculture group. And I think that our, our role should also be to um, give them the means to go out to their groups. Um, and so we have a bit more of an indirect role, I suppose, in providing capacity. So it's a bit, of, bit more of a helping specific members to get out in those regions. So I, I really like the ideas. The, the one request I think I have is just that we're clear about kind of how, you know, what it is we're, we're gonna do to achieve that and, and how we'll go about doing it and therefore the resources we need to put into it um, to get it done. But definitely as a framework, it works well for me. Thanks, Simon. Thanks, mate. Um, I think Bas was asking you to repeat the name of that financial um, the platform is the Global Agribusiness Alliance. 
Yeah, I'll, I'll yeah. share it in the chat now. Okay, I'll share a link fantastic. to it. Thank okay, you. great, fantastic. Okay, um, is there anyone else that'd like to 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 add something? What about you, Will? Um, how do you think that? Is there anything that you would like to add on 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 that, or you see that? Please, might make sure that that you get in touch with us. We will be sending an email now with with all this um, um, basically table and and if yeah. you see that there is something else, please provide your feedback. Yeah, thank you, Simon. I, I'll definitely do that. Good on you. Okay, I think. Um, look, please keep keep in 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 be be aware of of what's happening in the next couple of weeks. We're going to have probably another another session. Um, and, and we can even start kicking off with, with the capacity and the strengthening and, and development. So uh, more than more than happy to to keep keep talking. Okay. So thank you very much, Kai. I think is if there is anyone else you want to say something, Lufingo, you wanted to say something? Yeah. Uh, th thanks, Simon, for for this. And and uh, and Tony, I appreciate the the comments that uh, and um, what what you've just raised. I think one key thing that we should just make sure that we are aligned are the three the three groups because you'll find that certain activities that we've just identified here might be replicated elsewhere so we just need to come up with a very good mechanism so that they're all dovetailed neatly so we don't have to be reinventing the wheel and we run uh, in, in in sync thank you okay is there anyone else you want to say something thomas you weren't raising your hands no no I, mean, I, I was just saying then that we should not reinvent because a lot of programs we should be very specific and uh, you know our, our action plan should be very very specific and unique. That's what I yeah. guess. Thank you. Yeah, that's why we're trying to do um, this in a, in an engaging sort of engaging form because um, I don't want to be writing a piece of paper that then nobody cares. Like if 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 is the NGO your NGO um, Thomas is there is Hemsing. It's you know getting some some work out of it. If Davide or Bass or we can get Steve, you know, being constantly working with this on, and Will now that is new, you know, this is this is taking over. Otherwise, we just write a piece of paper. We say, yeah, we're gonna be this doing this in five years and happen what Bass was saying, you know, <laughs> that I'm like yeah, in a piece of paper and nobody cares. So please um, make sure that this is now and ever for, for, for everyone to, um, to put you know, your ideas there and see what, how, what you were saying, focusing on, on one thing, no, no so many. Okay, guys, so thank you so much, everyone. Tony, thank you so much, mate. Um, Lufingo, everyone, thank you so much for, for joining the discussion. And um, please be on, on social media, LinkedIn and, and Twitter. We've got, um, if, 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 I don't know if you're a member of, of the Alliance, I, I imagine, um, you are, but if not, uh, go on to um, our website, um, NFAO, and, 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 and get in touch, okay? Thank you so much, everyone. Thank you for turning your camera on and, and enjoying the discussion. Have a Thank good you. One. Thank you. Bye. Bye-bye. See you. Bye.